This is Center Stage, putting lawyers in the spotlight by highlighting attorneys and other industry experts to help take your law firm to the next level. Hey everyone, and welcome to Center Stage. I'm your host, John Henson. And this week, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about something that I think many business owners uh, kind of ins- uh, aspire to do, and that is getting to the point where uh, whether you are ready to move on to the next thing or you're coming to that retirement age, but it's just getting to the point where you are ready to sell your business. And one of the downsides, obviously, of selling your business is dealing with a lot of the taxes that come along with it. But um, my guest this week, uh, Mr. Ashley Tyson from uh, ozpros.com, he has a lot of experience in uh, maybe reducing or completely eliminating uh, as many of those taxes as possible. So uh, I've got him here today, and we're going to talk a lot about that. So uh, Ashley, thank you for joining us. How are you doing today? Fantastic, John. Thanks for having me as part of your show. Uh, excited to be here with you and uh, looking forward to talking about a, a thing that's near and dear to my heart, which is minimizing taxes for people. I hate to see people pay more taxes than they need to. And um, I think it is our civic duty as Americans to definitely pay our share, but not a penny more and right. to get creative about what that share is. So excited about talking about uh, some strategies to do that today. Yeah. So uh, we'll talk about OZ pros and what OZ stands for here in in just a little bit, but let's, let's jump in here. And what, where, where does someone start? You know, whether, like I mentioned before, whether they're approaching retirement age and they're looking to, you know, transfer ownership or whatever, maybe they're just that, you know, serial entrepreneur and they're ready to move on from one thing, go start a new business. Where does someone start? when they are really preparing to sell a business? So the first thing that you wanna do, and this is true no matter what kind of business it is, but you wanna really focus on the eight core drivers of value. You wanna build value in your business. And you know there's a number of those that, uh, that we can kind of get into the weeds on, but probably the main one, and the main one that causes the biggest issue when you go to actually exit is uh, your key employees. And, you know, a lot of people, the, the value of their business is tied up in them. And so the, the first thing that needs to happen is that you actually have to have a team that's going to be there for when you leave. The second piece is, is that you need to make sure that that team is going to stick around. And there's lots of different strategies about kind of how you can do that in the form of equity or phantom equity and that kind of thing. But one of the ones that we've seen have the most amount of success is a key employee retention program uh, that utilizes this concept that we call buckets. And um, I I don't know that we have a whole enough time to really dive into buckets, but effectively what it is, is it's it's a carrot and a stick where you fund money into a a vehicle that grows tax advantaged, and then it allows the employee to to take it out tax-free at the end. And so it becomes this retirement plan that's also got actual money in it that they own, it's in their name, but then they pledge it back to the employer uh, as a condition of their ongoing employment. And in order to make that truly tax neutral to the employee, you loan them the money to pay the taxes on it when you fund it every year. And so what it becomes is this great carrot and stick concept that, uh, that actually is really, really effective. And number one, keeping them around, but then number two, keeping them around after a transition. And what that does is, is make it extremely um, attractive for buyers because they're like, all right, this guy's got a great program that the employees are excited about, or this gal or whoever it is that's selling. And not only is it a, a great program that's gonna keep them until the exit happens, but then it's gonna keep them past the exit. And so some kind of program like that is, uh, is one of the best ways to kind of drive that value up. The second thing that we want people to be doing is to really focus on maximizing their earnings. So a lot of entrepreneurs at the end of the year, they'll spend down. So they will, uh, they'll come up with stuff that they can buy that's a legitimate business expense and they'll actually spend down their money at the end of the year. They'll postpone receivables and then they'll advance expenses in order to uh, try to get there to minimize what their reportable income is. And you do not want to do that if you're thinking about selling your business. And 
namely because it's going to drop the amount that's underwritable by a lender. And so it's going to make it way more difficult to get the what the value of the business is actually worth. Mm-hmm. The fourth and kind of, well, I don't know about fourth and final, but another element that you want to be thinking about as you're looking at transitioning is what are you going to do next? So what's your, like, what's your true passion in life? What's your significance going to be? And so that way, instead of running from your business, right? So we're thinking about, okay, well, man, I'm going to be losing this huge part of my life. Instead, you're focused on what you're going to. And I think that that can be a huge element and a huge component for people in their psyche that gets them excited about the the process because selling a business can be tough. And so you want them excited and you want to be excited about it because that's going to translate into excitement from the part of your buyer. The other piece of that is, is that it's going to, uh, it's going to provide kind of the springboard for the next chapter of your life. And one of the most powerful ways that you can uh, decrease taxes and provide cash to be able to provide for what it is going to be in your, you know, your next chapter, if you will, is by uh, donating a portion of your business every year. Um, and so, and, and I think we're probably bumping into some other issues that we might be talking about later, but that's another strategy that, uh, that, that people want to look at if they know that they've got a window and they've got a runway to be able to, to exit that they want to have uh, you know, to start doing some of these things that they can use as advanced planning as they're going into that exit. Awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, the the retirement account, semi-retirement account thing you mentioned, first, it's really interesting because, you know, I don't know how many business owners kind of think of that overall benefits package as being sort of an attractive reason to buy the business. And so um, the other thing that I, that I think about with this is, is the old adage of, you know, the, the best time to plant a tree was what, like 20 years ago, the second best 30 years ago, second, second best time is now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, it's never too early to start thinking about that exit strategy. Even if you just started your business last year, it's still good to have that, that plan in mind. And, and, you know, even if you plan on running that business until you retire, higher, you still want to be able to have that plan in place. And and one of the biggest things about that is you want to sell for the maximum value. You want to get the most out of it that you possibly can. And so with that in mind, like what are some things that business owners can actually start doing right now that can set themselves up for getting the top dollar for the thing that they built? Yep. So like I was talking about before, really nailing down those key employees and getting systems and repeatable and documented processes in place that is going to give a buyer comfort that it's not going to go away when you exit, when you go away. And um, what's really interesting about this, and you were talking about kind of begin with the end in mind, is that this is also the stuff that makes a business a lot more enjoyable to own if you want to own it long term or give it to your kids or sell it to your employees or whatever that looks like. And so it's processes. It's your people, right? Lock them into some kind of uh, of package that's going to not only incentivize them, but also to incentivize them to stay and to grow the business. And, you know, that buckets concept is really, really effective for that. It makes for happy employees, but it also, and there's actually statistics on this, it ends up being around a point and a half, right? So one and a half X on a cash flow turn uh, of extra purchase price when you go to sell. And, um, you know, the, the other kind of really interesting thing that you can do if whether you're starting your business this is less so for somebody that will be starting their business, but more so for somebody that's kind of got that three to five year window is to start looking at gifting a portion of your business into a donor advised fund. Because in doing so, you're able to gift up to 30% a year of non-cash assets. And so you can gift a non-voting percentage of your business into a donor advised fund. So it literally costs you no money out of pocket and it generates a 30% tax deduction for you this year. And then it builds value in your donor advised fund. So when you have that liquidity event, 
there's a big chunk of money that goes to your donor advised fund. Guess what? Donor advised funds don't pay capital gains taxes. So it becomes a really powerful tax play inside of the business sale to uh, allow people to reduce their taxes year over year and then ultimately pay less when they sell. So it's kind of a cool strategy. Yeah. And I mean, that's something I hadn't heard of yet. And I mean, granted, I'm not a business owner, so why would I have heard of that? But it, you know, it does, it, it gets my wheels turning, especially, you know, because, you know, Mark, uh, co-host of the show sometimes, but also the owner of Spotlight Branding, you know, it, it's so many different things that, you know, we can talk about and, and just kind of just have in place and especially to make our, you know, our employees lives better, but also just to secure the the overall health of Spotlight Branding and, and, it's just, it's, it, there's so many things out there and it's such an interesting world to dive into. And your world, I know right now is really focused on opportunity zones. Um, that right. is what the OZ and OZ Pro stands for. Um, so what, what are opportunity zones and how do they factor? Could they potentially factor into the future sale of a business? So opportunity zones are low income census tracts that were designated by each governor in conjunction with the Opportunity Zone legislation that was a part of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017. And what it does is, is it allows somebody that has a capital gain, whether that's long term or short term, it allows them to invest that gain into a qualified opportunity fund, and they get to defer that gain until 2026. And then when they go to pay the taxes on that gain, if they're invested by December of 2021, they get a 10% reduction. So either way, it's an interest-free loan from the government or a negative interest loan from the government on taxes that you would have paid in the following year. But the real value of this is for somebody in the new investment that you make, after you hold that investment for 10 years, you get a step up in basis to fair market value, which is really significant because not only does it eliminate capital gains taxes, but it also eliminates depreciation recapture. So what it provides for, and this is really interesting in the context of somebody that is potentially selling a business, is that a lot of business owners are leaving this chapter, but they're interested. They're not interested in going off into the sunset for retirement. They're thinking about what their next chapter is going to be. And it's more than likely going to be some kind of business. And this allows for them to take the capital gains or a portion of the capital gains from their sale put it into a fund and you can create your own fund, invest into your own business, and then be able to uh, grow that business over the next 10 years and exit it completely tax-free. Similarly, you can do that with uh, real estate and with other kind of investments into other deals as well. And so it becomes, and it has become a really powerful program, particularly in light of what Biden, the Biden administration is talking about doing with taxes via their green book, if they are successful at eliminating 1031 and, uh, and potentially the step up in basis of death, opportunity zones are going to be maybe the only kind of safe haven left where people can get tax advantaged investments. So people talk about how uh, you know, compound interest is the seventh wonder of the world. Well, tax-free compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. And so that's what opportunity zones allow you to do. So, all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to be vulnerable here for a second because this entire time I thought, and, and if you kind of mentioned this and I missed it, I apologize. I thought opportunity zones were like literal places in the city, like in every city where you could, you know, set up shop and it's more advantageous tax wise. Are you saying that, that opportunity zones are more, more of like a concept in turn in, in the tax? No, you're right. You're exactly right. You're okay. dead on it. They are actual physical geographic areas where, um, and it's a census tract. So it's an mm-hmm. actual like area of a, a city or a neighborhood or whatever, where if you set up shop in that area or you buy real estate in that area, that investment can be protected and can be subject to no taxes after a 10 year hold. So they are specific geographic areas. If you go to opportunitydb.com slash map, you can pull up a map of the opportunity zones and you can search via address in there to find out where they are here in Charlotte. It's kind of that I 85 corridor Mm -hmm. um, down by Eastway mall and then out by Kings mountain. Those are probably the closest opportunity zones to us. 
Cool. And, and so, you know, so then what, you know, and, and if you're just reiterating, that's fine. But like, what, what are the advantages then? So let's say I've got an office up here in Cornelius. What are the advantages and, and why would we then maybe, you know, once this lease is up, move down into an opportunity zone? What's the advantages of doing that? So you have to have some kind of capital gain event mm -hmm. because it's got to start with a capital gain. But assuming that you could, you know, that you've got some Bitcoin that's out there that's got a little bit of appreciation in it or some kind of stock or whatever, you could actually move your office from where you are right now down to an opportunity zone, convert your business into an opportunity zone business, uh, make an investment into your business via your capital gain, then effectively have that piece uh, uh, you know, of the business be owned by your qualified opportunity fund. After two years, start redeeming out your non-qualified opportunity fund interest and effectively be able to get it to where 99% of your business is now eligible for a step up in basis to fair market value 10 years later. And so we're, and so it's a little bit more complicated if you're moving, right? If you've got an existing business that you're trying to do that with, mm -hmm. but if you're starting a new business or you're acquiring a business and you've got capital gains to do that with, it becomes kind of a no brainer of why would you not do that in an opportunity zone? Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, sounds like, you know, it, whether you're, you know, maybe you're getting ready to start your own law firm, maybe you want to buy another law firm, whatever the case is. I mean, there's still a lot of opportunity there. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's really great. Obviously for me, I would definitely need a lot of help kind of navigating that. That's where someone like you comes in. So yeah. How can people get in touch with you and, and OZ pros and, and maybe explore this opportunity a little bit further? Yeah, so we're available at uh, ozpros.com. And um, we, so it's kind of interesting because um, we originally started this with uh, the eye to become kind of the legal Zoom for opportunity zones. And um, so we set up like a whole document management system and the ability for people to go in and do their forms themselves. But um, it was fascinating because people kept messing up the forms. And so it was more time. And then we had a done for you service where we would actually do it for them. That was kind of an afterthought. We're like, well, most people are going to want to do this themselves. We had so much more interest in uh, the done for you service. And it was so much more profitable because we were spending the same amount of time undoing the mess that they were creating that it, it was like, okay, let's go the route of just the done for you package. But in doing that, we set up these strategy calls. And so, uh, you know, effectively people from around the country can uh, call, they can set up a call and we'll walk them through, answer their questions, whether that's a half hour or an hour, hours typically better, but it's the shortest and fastest way to learn about opportunity zones out there. And it kind of helps people cut through a lot of the morass of information that's out there. And then what we've also done is we've established a community, an online community called Ozworks Group. And, uh, and then we've also got an educational product. And so I, one of the things that's, you know, that we regularly help is we're kind of the attorney. So I'm an attorney. Uh, I, I like to call myself a reformed attorney because I try to practice as little as possible, right? Um, but I, I'm kind of an attorney's attorney. So I help other people who are interested in helping their clients do opportunity zones. And so we can do the actual formation and setup and that kind of drill. And we can help with specific information, but we're not doing any of the on the ground work. We don't want to do that. That's not part of our business model. And so we've got a lot of traction of helping attorneys to do that. We also help uh, CPAs do it as well. And so we'd love to help out anybody that, uh, that has questions or just wants to learn about it or wants to try and figure out how they can deploy it as a strategy to help mitigate taxes. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, I will put the link to ozpros.com in the show notes. Obviously, you can, awesome. if you're watching the video, you can see the link right there uh, behind Ashley's head there. Um, Ashley, this and has been actually, great. Actually, if you I've, can put this into the show notes, put ozpros.com slash save 50 and, okay. that'll, uh, and that'll be a discounted strategy call. Awesome. Even better. All right. So we're going to wrap up here with uh, one last question, our famous little final question. Ashley, if you had one piece of advice for our attorneys out there, what would it be? 
So what's great is that being an attorney myself, I actually think that I can kind of give not just advice, but I can give experience share is make yourself as in as dispensable to the company as possible, right? So most attorneys, it's all about them and it's all about their knowledge. And this is something that we're wrestling with right now. And that I'm really trying to implement ourselves. And one of the best ways to do that is to hire great people and then to get them on an employee retention package. So the Buckets platform and the Buckets program is actually one of the best ways to make that happen. And I'm happy to share that and introduce uh, the, the guy that I use to implement Buckets in my company with anybody out there that's, uh, that is interested. But it's the one way that I've seen that actually works to retain lawyers and paralegals and to actually build value in a law firm that's saleable. So build value in your firm by dispensing the work, by bringing in great people, by getting those processes and systems that we talked about earlier on in the show, apply that same you know, uh, mindset and mode of how you do business to your firm, and then it makes it sellable. It makes something that um, that you know, somebody like myself or Viking or, uh, you know, other business brokers can actually sell to another lawyer uh, and or to your associates that uh, that you want to make partners or your partners and that kind of thing. And so uh, that's my one piece of advice for attorneys and would love to talk about it and would love to introduce everybody to Kevin Monahan, who is the author of Buckets and the system that we used in order to, to make that happen. Awesome. Like I said, man, this has been great. I think I've learned more on this episode than I have in a lot of the others that we've done so far. Um, Hopefully this is helpful for all of you out there. Uh, Give Ashley uh, and OZ Pros a visit if it's something that you might be interested, even if you're just wanting to learn more about it. I mean, we could have talked for four hours on just all the ins and outs of this and how to maximize the sale of your business and all of that. Um, Ashley is a great wealth of information. So definitely go pick his brain. Uh, That is going to do it for us this week. Uh, Continue to rate, review us on Apple Podcasts and wherever else you're consuming the show. And that's going to do it. Ashley, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, John. Appreciate uh, the opportunity (laughs) to be a guest on your show. Awesome. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. To learn more, go to spotlightbranding.com slash center stage.